Good morning. Welcome to CCV Sunday Service live stream. My name is Nora. And I'm Alfredo. And today we're going to begin our service with prayer. So if everybody could please join me and bow your heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice that you have given us for our redemption of our sins. We ask for you to bless the pastors so they focus your word, Lord, to us so that we, we could be shepherd as the way we're supposed to be, Lord, to learn you, to learn our relationship with you, Lord. I ask and I thank you for all your prayers and all the blessings and I pray for all CCB family. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. Thank 
guys so much for joining us for worship. Um, this song is such a powerful, powerful song that declares just blessings upon blessings from our generations to come, from our children to their children to their children. So I hope you guys had um, an awesome worship time and on to the next part of the service. All right, good morning, Christ Church of the Valley and Facebook family. Um, I pray that you enjoyed that worship. I pray that you've had a blessed week. Um, I want to take a quick second to thank the Paniaguas, um, Alfredo and Nora for opening us up in prayer, um, and also the Mendez sisters, um, Belen, Yvette, and Adriana Keith, actually, my sister-in-law, uh, for that beautiful worship. But that's generational worship. We talk about for their children, their children, and their children. Uh, just amazing job, ladies. Um, we thank you. I, I do miss the atmosphere of worship again each time um, I get on with you. I'm excited to give another word of God and uh, share the time, uh, but I do miss the human element. I do miss the live instruments and um, everything that church brings. So uh, continue to pray uh, that the Lord um, just quickly or as quickly as he'd like to um, just allow us to get back into service. I do enjoy doing it virtually, but it's nothing like uh, being there face to face with you all. But what this does do is open up a whole new audience. We've had people listen um, in that wouldn't ordinarily be able to get to our church on a Sunday morning. So I do thank you for um, those that are visiting with us that may not be members with us. Um, there's people that actually watch from all over the United States, and we have a couple of people watching uh, from the continent of Africa. Um, you know, the friends that from America, they've connected somehow and started watching us on um, social media. So do continue to share the gospel each and every Sunday, um, each and every Tuesday when we do Bible study, uh, because we never know whose life we can affect and who li whose lives we can touch. Um, so uh, like I say every week, let's not be stingy with the gospel. Uh, let's put it on our timelines. Let's share it. Um, let's start a watch party so those that are um, abroad or in, even if they're up the street, they can uh, watch it with us. Also, just a reminder, we're going to be doing communion at the end of service. So go ahead and get your elements ready. Uh, so that it can be a smooth transition into that. Um, and I think that's all I have as far as announcements go. I'm going to go ahead and pray and open up the service. Um, Lord God, we thank you for another sunny Sunday here in Southern California. Uh, we pray that those that are um, watching all over the place, Lord God, wherever they may be, as this word reaches them, Lord God, we ask that your presence also does as well, Lord God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you uh, not only abide in us, but stand up and rise up in us and lead us um, as your word promised that it would. Um, we take a back seat to you, especially today on this day. Um, of thanks that we give, that we get an opportunity to worship the Lord. Um, so thank you for the freedom uh, that this country allows us to broadcast, um, Lord God, over uh, Facebook and YouTube and all of the other social platforms that we have, Lord God, so that the gospel can continue to go forward. Um, we pray today that the word that is intended, Lord God, it does exactly what it's what you've intended it to do, Lord God. We pray that it penetrates our hearts and our minds. It allows us to think different about not only our present circumstances, but about eternal life, Lord God. Um, we pray that as we begin to speak about intimacy with you, Lord God, that um, those that are most experiencing your word, Lord God, can have breakthrough. And those that this may be their first time listening to the gospel, Lord God, that you um, affect them all the same, Lord God, um, and that you begin to move in all of our lives. Um, and capture us, Lord God, so that we can maybe be better followers of you. So we love you and praise you. I pray for this message that you prepared in me and through me, Lord God. Um, again, Holy Spirit, lead, have your way um, so that your agenda will be met. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you for joining again. Uh, today's title of the message is called Intimacy with God, right? And, and it's such a um, a, a right now word with God, because there's so many different things. Again, we've been talking about it that we can be focusing on. It's still, uh, we're in the midst 
um, of a global pandemic. Um, so many people um, have been affected even close to me, um, family members. So this thing is absolutely real. And uh, we're praying for those that are affected, um, that they have a speedy recovery, that they recover indeed. Um, amen. And that the Lord continue to take care of those that are sick, our essential workers. Uh, but there's so many different things to be focused on with the media and um, so many um, social issues still going on. We're in the midst of a presidential debate that's just starting to heat up and that's going to get hotter and hotter until um, the election time comes in November. So there's so many things to draw us away. Um, on top of that, I even got on a, a new social platform called TikTok, right? So there's so many social media platforms with Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok and all these different things that we can spend so much time indulging in um, and spend an intimate time, if you will, uh, and not spending enough intimate time with the Lord. On top of that, there's the human element. Some of you, because of the quarantine, um, you haven't been able to go out to ball games and stadiums and concerts and um, even to the mall and shop because things have been opened and closed. Uh, we can't go sit inside of restaurants right now. So most of us are at home uh, more than we've been in recent history or our whole lives. So we have our families, right? I've spent more time with my wife. Um, to my liking, I don't know how much she likes it because I can be a lot sometimes, um, you know, so, you know, we've spent so much time together and been able to get closer together in this season. So we've had the opportunity to get closer to people, get closer to our family, those that we're quarantining with. But I want to ask you this question today, um, in this time that we've had to where the whole world is seemingly just about slowed down to a stop, have you been spending more time with God? Has your intimacy with God increased in this time? If it hasn't, that's what today's message is all about because one thing that the Lord desires is to spend time with his children. Not to, you, you know, just imagine for those of you who are married and even who are not, you, you can imagine this, but if, if the only time I spent with my wife each day is when I was asking her for something and, and then, uh, you know, I gave her a rush kiss on my way out the door each time I left, like, you know, like some of us do, we'll, we'll pray and, and say, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to work. Lord, bless me on the way to work. And, and like we're in the car and we're praying. Um, you know, that's almost like it, I haven't talked to my wife all day. And each time I leave, I give her a little peck on the cheek. All right, see you later. I'm out of here. Right. That's not intimate time. So to build intimate time, um, you know, it, it requires us to go deeper in relationship. Um, so my prayer today is that this word allows us to understand what the heart of the father is on this matter. Um, a couple of weeks ago when I preached, because um, last week Elder Lamont was up and he did a fantastic job as he always does. Man, he's such a student in the word. Um, we learned so much about the justice system of Christ. If you missed that message, do yourself a favor. Go back to the CCV Palmdale YouTube page um, or even scroll down on our Facebook page so you can watch last week because he had a whole lesson on the justice system of Christ that was absolutely amazing. But two weeks ago uh, when I preached, um, you know, I brought up the point at the end uh, because I was leading into this message. Um, I told people to, to because when Jesus, the day before, um, you know, he was to go to the cross, or the, you know, it's that week, actually, um, you know, he said a prayer for his disciples. And his prayer was that he they be unified, even in his absence. He, he prayed that they be so unified that the world would come to him because of their unity and because of their love to one another. So you talk about, you know, any, any dying man, any normal dying man, um, you know, that, that's here, when they speak their last words, those are words that we tend to remember. How much more should we remember the words of Christ? In some of the last words that he spoke with his disciples, um, they witnessed him praying to the Father. And he said, Lord, I pray that they be unified, right? So I had everyone, um, I, I, you know, I tend to give challenges at the end of service. So I challenged everyone to read John 17, because that's where that prayer is housed. And how important is that prayer? It's the longest recorded prayer um, that Jesus Christ spoke in the Bible, right? Um, so it, it, it obviously was important. So what did he say in that prayer? That his people be unified. So I had people to meditate on those scriptures um, and then pray to the Father and, spend, and begin to spend at least one hour in a day. How many hours are there in a day? 
24. If we can't give one back to the Lord, then something is going on in our lives, especially in this season, because what else are we doing, right? Um, you know, we can't go out anywhere. Um, we can enjoy the time with the Lord. So I'm chall I've challenged people to do that, um, and I hope you got great results with that, because um, as the Word says, as you draw near to the Lord, that was a, one of the key scriptures that I used, um, He will draw near to you. So how many of us out there desire a more intimate relationship with the Lord? Right. Uh, my prayer is that every hand goes up or you all comment in the section. Me, I desire a more intimate relationship with the Lord um, or something like that, because that should be the goal of our lives. Right. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll pick up from where I left off last time. And the purpose of encouraging each person to pray and to begin to spend more time with the Lord is not just to check it off of our to do list. Um, the purpose is so that we can begin to build, build intimacy with the Lord. I mean, spend real time with him, uh, because I think that's what he desires more than ever right now. Otherwise, you know, I mean, we would be running about doing all of the things that we normally do, and we would be missing God. The world moves so fast, and we have so many things that we occupy ourselves with, um, but it's just perfect right now, the timing that we have. If we're going to look on a positive, anything that we can take away from this pandemic, um, one thing we can't say is that we don't have enough time. Right. There's plenty of time right now to spend to begin to spend with the Lord. So the purpose was for us to build that intimacy. Um, I feel one of the biggest lacks within the body of Christ um, is our intimate time with the Lord. Many of us pray. All of us believe. But are we really spending intimate time with the Lord? Um, you know, are we just letting allowing our request to be known? We spent the last couple of weeks um, in Bible study talking about prayer and what proper prayer looks like. You know, so yeah, we make our requests and we go to God, but do we allow time so God can come back to us to either answer us or instruct us on the things that He desires for us to know? Many of us we don't WFA as they say, wait for and wait for answers. Right. We just say, Lord, I want this or Lord, bless me with this or Lord, do this for me in my life in the name of Jesus. Right. But are we spending the amount of time to wait for him to answer us? Amen. Um, um, we have belief, but many Christians lack power and authority. Um, power and authority comes from a place of spending intimate time with the Lord. Right. Our spiritual power is directly related to the amount of intimacy, the intimate time that we spend with the Lord. So our spiritual power, again, is directly related to that time we spend with the Lord. We can't experience the authority of God um, or operate in it, right, or allow it to operate in us or through us, right, if we have a long-distance relationship with the Lord. So just imagine if you have a phone, because many of us, and, and uh, you know, I saw something cool online, um, if you're 35, or I believe it said, or even 30 and older, they said, if you're talking on the phone, and I just did it, you know, how do you talk on the phone? And everybody does this, right? But young people, if you say, you know, if you're talking on the phone, what gesture would you use? They go like this. So, so just imagine if your phone is on speakerphone, and you set it down. If you're right up on it, you can hear it clearly. If someone were giving you instructions, right, and they were vital to your life, and you had it on speakerphone, if you're right up on it, you can hear it. But as you begin to move away, and you back up, Right. You, you can hear it less and less clear with every step that you take back. Right. And, and if you put yourself in another room and those instructions are vital and they're to give you life. And, and the difference is you live if you hear and you understand if you and you adhere or you die if you don't. That's the type of relationship some of us have with our Lord. Right. We back up so much and we don't get close. We don't draw near and we hear him less and less because not because the phone is moving. Right. It's because we're moving away. Right. So make sure that you stay plugged in um, and you commit it to every single day. Get closer and closer to the source. Otherwise, how else would you hear proper instruction? Amen. Um, if you really want to experience God power, you have to increase your passionate pursuit of intimacy. Right. So many people are saying and we you may be one of them. Right. I know that I've been on the end of it saying I just wish I, I could feel God right closer to me. I wish I had a closer relationship um, with him. Um, you know, but the only way to do that is if we draw nearer to him. Right. Because God is there. He's always here. Um, but are we investing the time and we're spending um, time by, you know, utilizing our time wisely by getting closer to him? Right. So if you lack power and if you lack purpose, it's probably because you lack intimacy. Uh, far too many Christians love Jesus, but have no authority. 
And that's a problem. Jesus Christ, um, you know, as he ascends into heaven, he says, listen, I have to go. I have to get out of here because if I don't, the helper will not come. The same spirit that Jesus Christ operated in or that operated within Jesus Christ, we now have access to. So if we're not accessing and allowing the Holy Spirit to thrive on the inside of us, that's on us because the power is there. Jesus Christ said that some of them would do even greater things than they witnessed me do. How was he able to do the things that he did as far as um, knowing what to say and when to say it? As far as the healings, right? Jesus literally would touch people that could not see and they could see. Do you know that some of us possess those very same healing powers? Right. Jesus was able to uh, mend relationships and put people together and just his presence brought about peace. We have that same opportunity. You know, some of us out there um, have the spirit of um, wisdom on the inside of us that we're not keying in and tapping in on because we're not operating um, in authority. And the reason why we don't have authority is because we have no intimacy. Right. And some Christians allow their circumstances to dictate everything rather than them dictating to their circumstances. You see, I don't allow my circumstances, nor should you. You shouldn't allow your circumstances to tell you how to live. You should tell your circumstances, listen, this is what we're going to do. This is what's acceptable. This is what's not. This is what we're going to change. That's having that wisdom, that serenity prayer. Amen. So I'll reference um, Ephesians 3 because this is where we're going to pick up. Ephesians 3 and 13 is going to be my first reference. Um, you know, and, and Paul is speaking to the church corporately. Right. So he writes this letter and he's speaking to the church at Ephesus and he's telling them not to be discouraged. Verse 13 says um, in, in, in Ephesians 3 and 13. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. Amen. So so Paul has captured, uh, you know, and the people I um, mean, he's been on the run. Right. Because so many people, so many sometimes when you speak the truth. And especially if you're speaking in the name of Jesus Christ. And in those days, there's people that, quite frankly, they didn't want to harm you. They wanted to kill you. So they wanted to kill Paul and they wanted to capture him. They wanted to place him in jail. Um, and, and his believers and his followers, um, they were beginning to get discouraged. And Paul can pick up on that. So he said, listen, don't be discouraged. This is for you. I'm so, don't be discouraged or lose heart um, what I'm suffering for you, um, which is your glory. Right. To lose heart. Right. And this is what was happening to the people. And that's one of the worst things that uh, we can do as believers, no matter what our circumstances say, we should allow our circumstances to dictate our behavior. And, and I get it. We've all been there. We're human. This is why we have the Bible, because the Bible reminds us not to lose heart, because to lose heart means that uh, we've given up. Right. Have you ever been close to giving up in your life? Right. Um, and it's by the grace of God for, by some, that some of us have not. Right. Um, that means to faint. It means to quit, to throw in the towel. I remember um, watching um, a, a, a Rocky movie um, and, and they were about to throw in the towel. And Rocky said, don't you dare. Right. You know, and that's how we should be in life, because we could lose literally like Rocky would in a 12 round fight. You know, and this is why I love um, theater and drama, because in a 12 round fight, he could be losing 11 and a half rounds. But all it takes is one haymaker and he knocks somebody out, right? And, and that's the power and the ability that we have to harness. Because as long as we've been training in the gym like Rocky was, and our training um, is on our knees and praying to the Father and reading our word and worshiping the Lord, um, the first element of the blueprint, right? If you've been tracking with us, um, we've been talking about the blueprint. And we're a blueprint church. It's made up of five um, elements, five Fs, right? Your faith, family, finance, fitness, and focus, right? And, and if we focus on our faith um, and we spend time with the Lord on a daily basis, it doesn't matter what the outcome looks like. We can be down on every single scorecard, but the Lord will give us enough strength to muster up and land that last haymaker. So we can't um, be down or, 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 or um, quit on our own situation because the Lord will never quit on us. He'll never leave us. He will never forsake us. That means in the 25th hour, he gives us enough strength and energy to overcome any obstacle. So I don't care what your circumstances say. I don't care how broke your bank account say you are. The Lord will provide. I don't care what your relationships look right look like right now. If you're pouring into them and you're praying about them, the Lord is going to provide. He'll make up the difference. He'll put people together. He'll, I don't care what your employment status looks like. The Lord will provide. Amen. 
Amen. So Paul unleashes one of the most potent prayers um, that's recorded in the Bible. And Paul had some doozies when it comes to prayer because he was a prayer warrior. Um, you know, he wrote a lot of the New Testament. Uh, many experts estimate closer to about two thirds of the New Testament um, is written by Paul. So we're going to pick up in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Um, honey, when you do that, the camera shakes. Your elbows. Um, so uh, I'm sorry. Um, but in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, um, it reads this way. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. All right, so he starts off in prayer. For whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory may grant you to be strengthened with power through the, his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is uh, the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and now the understanding of his word, because we're going to get some understanding in this word today. Uh, at the heart of Paul's prayer was a simple main point, and this is going to be our point for today. Spiritual intimacy expands spiritual capacity, and spiritual capacity expands spiritual authority. I'll say it one more time, and then I'll say it a different way. Spiritual intimacy expands spiritual capacity, and spiritual capacity expands spiritual authority. Um, now, let me say it this way. If you want more authority, you must possess more capacity. But in order to have more capacity, you must have greater intimacy. You see, these are basic building blocks uh, to authority because the end, everybody wants to have the authority and the power of God. But Jesus Christ didn't just get it just because he was Jesus Christ. No, Jesus Christ was a man much like you and I. So he had feelings, he had emotions. Uh, but what Jesus Christ uh, did a little bit better or a lot better than most of us is he managed his time because he managed to spend time with the Lord, intimate time. Because when he makes statements like, only do what I see the Father do in heaven, only say what the Father authorizes me to say, that means that his time was so intimate um, that he was led by the very Spirit of God that you and I now have access to, right? He wasn't led out of emotion. So when things happen, Jesus Christ, name me a time in the Bible where Jesus Christ was just overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. Uh, you can't find one. Right. You know, so in our lives, though, how many times do we get overwhelmed by our current circumstances? Right. Uh, far many, too many times. Right. Than, than you could imagine. So many people, you know, I get a call um, as a pastor um, and so many people are in crisis. And um, if they just step back and I ask them, you know, a lot of times like, well, you know, pastor, uh, my marriage, you know, is, is just going down the tubes. Well, how often are you praying? I, you know, have have you taken your wife's hand or have you taken your husband's hand? Um, and pray. How often, when's the last time you all pray together? Or pastor, my children are just acting up and things are crazy or pastor, I'm broke or all of these problems, right? You know, they, and they're reading me um, symptoms um, to these problems. Uh, but this, the one so, and only solution, um, have you gone to the solution first? Amen. Right. So spiritual intimacy leads to a greater capacity and capacity and greater authority. So little intimacy, little capacity, little capacity, little authority. Greater intimacy, greater capacity. Greater capacity, greater authority. You see how that's working out? So Paul first speaks to their intimacy, right? In verse 14, he says, I want to make sure that you know, as I bow my knee to the Father, that you understand that you will be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man, right? So not externally, but internally is where God wants to strengthen us, right? Sometimes we feel weak externally, um, sometimes we feel weak in our minds, right? But God wants to, to give us strength on the inside of us, amen? The fundamental job of the Holy Spirit is to make experiential in your life the rule of Christ, right? Uh, the goal isn't just to have some sort of out-of-body 
tingly experience. Now, that's not the reason for the Holy Spirit. So many of us uh, relate the Holy Spirit to some church experience that we had where we felt tingly and we say, man, I felt the Spirit moving in there. Now, the music was just loud. Dude, that, that, you know, a lot of the times that we're calling the Holy Spirit um, into play, the Holy Spirit was not um, evident in that moment. It was our emotions and how we were made to feel because somebody sang a song good or a pastor preached a good word and said, everybody say, hey man, pastor, right? But that's not necessarily a move of the Spirit. Mostly a move of the Spirit um, is on a personal level, right? And that comes because we spend intimate time with God. The goal isn't just to have an emotional outburst, to go... Um, is so that you can have an experience and power and authority. So you can experience the power and authority of Jesus Christ. So if you witness or if you felt uh, the presence of the Spirit, then there should be opportunity for you to walk and exercise in power because God doesn't waste power. He doesn't give it to you just so you feel good. He gives it to you so you, he can allow you to either know what he desires for you to know, so he can use your hands for healing, so he can use your mouth to speak well of someone so that their spirit and their continence be lifted up. There should be some kind of, if there's an indwelling of the spirit and a move of the spirit, there should be some kind of outpouring of power and authority that comes from you. Amen. Um, so what happens spiritually inter internally will determine your capacity. Many things work similarly. So as human beings, um, we can relate ourselves to popcorn. Now, I like a good bowl of buttery popcorn with some extra salt, right? Um, especially when watching a good movie. A lot of people don't know how popcorn pops, right? Um, every kernel of popcorn what it has is moisture on the inside of it. So when you put it in a microwave or you put it under fire, um, you heat up the moisture, right? And that moisture then becomes steam. And then the steam begins to rise, right? And it's contained by that little kernel or that little uh, hard exterior, um, you know, outside. When the steam begins to rise and it presses against the shell, when the shell can't handle the pressure of the heated moisture, that's how... Um, it becomes a, a, a steam that's rising and then begins to give way. And then we can hear it. What you hear when it gives way is that pop, 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 right? Sound. Um, that's good popcorn popping. You hear an explosion of deliverance. Amen. Uh, now that which is inside of the popcorn, it begins to expand to the point where the outside can no longer hold it hostage. Right. I don't know if you've ever tried to eat up pop popcorn, but it's an excruciating, it's a pretty miserable experience. Um, who would have ever thought by looking at that little kernel of popcorn and watching them pop that all that was being held hostage on the inside? In fact, once it, the inside explodes, then you can't even recognize the outside anymore because whatever was on the inside um, becomes anything that anybody's talking about. Right. And that's much how we are. So one of the reasons why there is so little authority is that people are controlled by their outside, not their inside. But when the Holy Spirit begins to heat us up, right, you know, we should be turning into that steam that just can't be contained anymore and pop. So now we're not judged by the outside because the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of us. Right. So um, Paul makes it clear in First Thessalonians 5 and 23, where he says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and your soul and your body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying um, there are three parts of reality to our lives. There's the spirit, which is our ability to communicate with God, right? And that's number one. Then there's our soul, which is the ability to communicate within ourselves. And then there's our body, bodies and our body has the ability to communicate with our environment. So the way that it's supposed to work is the body obeys the soul and the soul obeys the spirit. But when we're out of spiritual alignment, it operates quite in reverse, right? Our body is telling our soul what we want it to do and our soul is not even communicating with the spirit in most cases, right? So as the spirit informs the soul, the body knows how to function. So if the outside does not function properly, it's because the soul is not informing it properly. And the reason why the soul doesn't inform it properly is because the spirit doesn't have the freedom to inform. So our external function is tied to our internal restriction. Why do we have internal restriction, folks? 
because we don't have intimacy with God in order for him to unlock those restrictions that lie on the inside of us, right? He says, I pray that you, um, that you, that because of your spiritual intimacy, that Christ dwell within you, right? So this was Paul's prayer for us, that we spend so much time with Jesus Christ, that we spend so much time via the Holy Spirit communicating to God in prayer, um, that Christ dwells on the inside of us. Uh, in fact, I pray that Christ make a home within you, right? Is Christ welcome? Do you have the welcome mat out, if you will, for Christ to come and visit and dwell with you? Amen. This is good to me. I hope I'm preaching to somebody, man, because this is this is good stuff. Um, you know, um, I hope you're captured and I hope you're taking notes. Um, but it's all about spiritual intimacy. Uh, Paul's means he wants Christ to have the freedom to remove her into every aspect of our being. Again, giving the Holy Spirit, giving Jesus Christ license to operate on the inside of us. Um, we'll sing the songs. We'll raise our hands on Sunday. But how about our Monday through Saturday? Are, are we saying, Christ, use me, Lord? right? Have your way. I give myself away so you can use me, right? That has to be a lifestyle, but that lifestyle is adopted. Um, that lifestyle is, is, is put into play um, by us having intimacy with the Lord. More intimacy leads to more capacity. More capacity leads to more power and authority. Amen. Uh, the goal of intimacy with God is authority. So Christ had intimacy, therefore he had authority. We are to have intimacy with God the same way, in the same manner that Christ had with them so that we could have spiritual authority. Uh, so the things that we tell you to do, it's not just because it sounds good. So we, we encourage everybody again uh, to read your Bible. How often? Every day, right? To pray. How often? Without ceasing. Pray every day, right? Pray about everything. Right. Um, you know, and, and having an open relationship with God, worshiping the Lord and being obedient to what the word says and what the spirit is leading you to be obedient to um, those things lead to deeper intimacy. Um, and the body of Christ wonders, how do I know if it's working? Well, it'll show up in your authority. Right. No authority, no intimacy. And, and, and it's obvious to those who have spiritual authority, um, you can tell when others lack it because they're walking around like chickens with their heads cut off sometimes, right? And those that, when, when no matter what life throws at them, um, you just aren't swayed, right? You know, it can be a, a hurricane of things going on in your life, but you are the man, you're the constant. You're bolted, feet um, steady on the ground, and nothing can knock you off your mark because it's the Lord that's holding you there and giving you peace in the midst of the storm. Amen? Somebody should say hallelujah to that. Um, you'll know that it's working when authority shows up in your life um, when you need it most. Amen? Intimacy, intimacy, again, is about spending time with the Father. Um, it's not necessarily just about studying the Word or practicing the word, or, or, or learning it, um, in fact, to like get a grade on a test. There's a lot of people that know a lot of word that have no power, right? So you've seen people, right? And, and this isn't a knock on seminary, uh, but there's some people that know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, or from Genesis to the map, from cover to cover, but they have no spiritual authority. So it's not just about learning a bunch of stuff. It's about spending proper time with the Lord uh, that translates itself into um, spiritual authority. So lack of authority means that, you know, we can be learning a bunch of stuff in our head, but has it penetrated and made its way to our heart. Amen. So uh, the dwarf planet Pluto, right, is very cold. It's the furthest one away from the sun. Very cold. Mercury is very hot. And it all depends on the distance that they have from the sun. You get that? Right? Uh, so Pluto is cold all the time because it's far away all the time. Mercury is hot all the time because it's close all the time. So in this equation, are you Mercury or are you Pluto? Are you close to God all the time and, and always hot and, and fire shut up in your bones because the Holy Spirit is operating and moving in you? And you have spiritual authority. The Lord can trust you. He knows that you're on the same page and you use that power for good. Or are you Pluto and so far away um, and, a, and have dwarf power? You can't even feel the heat of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, that's how some of us live our lives. So you can move in closer so that you can be heated up by the sun. Allow the Holy Spirit to operate and move, maneuver on the inside of you. So Paul starts off talking about uh, spiritual intimacy, right? And that's verse 14. When he talks about get on your knees or as I get on my knee and pray, um, I pray that the, the Jesus Christ makes a home on the inside of you. 
Um, but that leads him to telling you about the result of spiritual intimacy. So we're going to move on. This is the result. This is capacity expanded, right? So he says in verse 18 and 19, and I'll read it again. I want you to have strength to comprehend with all the saints with, I mean, what is the breadth and length and height and depth? And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So I pray that your capacity begins to expand uh, and you receive the fullness of, of God, right? You know, how many of us have, have expanded our capacity, right, in this season? How many of us are spending more time, right? Because this is a monumental time in our lives, right? This is something that we're going to have to account for. Um, the Lord is going to say, you know, we were on social media asking, your, asking our friends, um, you know, what's your response? All this social injustice, what's your response? The Lord is going to say, what's your response? I slowed down the whole world so that you can focus on me. And, and all you were doing was running around was, you know, some of us is calling people racist. Some of us are being divisive and disconnected. Some of us are not even praying for a solution. We're just talking about the problems only, right? You know, and some things needed to be called out. Um, but the Lord is going to ask us, you know, what was your solution? I mean, did you use the time wisely, right? Um, so the Bible says that God won't be mocked. You'll reap what it is you sow. So in other words, don't expect to reap more capacity if you're not sowing in the, into intimacy with God, right? So you can't experience the fullness of God. And, and, and to be on earth and to have the Holy Spirit present with us and to miss the fullness of God, man, we've missed our moment. We've missed the whole point. You know, we've, we can indulge in so many other things that are not necessarily important in the whole scheme of things. What we're supposed to experience via the Holy Spirit is the fullness of God. And that's Paul's prayer for us, right? It's so important that, again, it's written in here for us to study, not just for us to know, but for us to operate in, right? To increase our intimacy so that in turn our capacity can be increased. A business mentor once told me in, in the river of life, right? In life, there's a, there's a great river that's flowing, right? Life is moving. So it, it's up to you what you take to the river. You can take a teaspoon, you can take a, a bucket, or you can take a big old tanker or a dump truck and fill it, right? And, and it's up to you, right? The tools are there at your disposal. At your disposal, you can use them the way that you decide. The river will only give you as much as you can handle, right? So if you bring, which many of us do, a, a teaspoon to the river, and this is we pray on Sundays. You know, we say, how you doing? We say, blessed and highly favored in the Lord. You know, we speak Christianese one day a week. But then we go back to living our regular lives and disconnected from the Lord. If the last time that you've opened up your scripture was last Sunday when we said turn to this scripture, uh, you're bringing a teaspoon to life. And life will only give you, the river will only give you as much as you can handle. So if you got a teaspoon, how much will you get? A teaspoon's worth. Never can you get any more, right? Um, some of us bring a bucket. So the people, who, folks who bring a bucket, you know, they attend church on Sunday and then on Tuesday when we have Bible study, you know, but if Tuesday is the last day that you've opened up your mouth to pray to the Lord earnestly, if it's the last day that you've worshiped the Lord openly, right? If it's the last day that you've read your word, um, when we said turn to this scripture or turn to this chapter on Tuesday, then you bring a bucket. Yeah, you got more than just Sunday worshipers. Amen. And this isn't to put you down. This is to encourage you. But all your capacity will allow you to be filled with is a bucket's worth. Amen. So imagine that being the spirit. You got a little bit more than those who come once, but all you got is a bucket. But it's a river. So those of you who have a consistent, intimate relationship with the Lord, you come, you show up with a tanker or many tankers and you sell everything you have to invest in more tankers. Right, you dig a, you dig a big old canyon on your property so some of that river of life can flow on in, and you can have a, a, a backed up reserve. Amen. That's what the Lord is asking of us or requiring of us to have a deeper, intimate relationship with Him. Because as you expand your capacity, more of the fullness of the Lord can come in. I hope that's good to somebody because that just preached to me. Amen. Imagine a teaspoon, a bucket, or a tanker. Which one are you gonna pick when it comes to capacity in the Lord? Right? So ask yourself right now, what's your current capacity? Are we Sunday Christians? Are we Sunday, Tuesday Christians? Or are we everyday followers and believers of Jesus Christ who have an intimate relationship with the Lord God 
through the Holy Spirit so that when we come to the river of life, you know, our tank is continually full and we have a large capacity to, to bring, bring it on home with. Amen. So the reason why some of us have such limited authority is because of our limited capacity. And if you have limited capacity, it means you have limited intimacy. Um, and we're going to begin to wind down and close. Um, then having talked about expanding spiritual capacity, Paul then comes and says in the verse that we all love to quote, for some of you guys, uh, Ephesians 3 and 20 may be your favorite verse. It's one of my favorite, but not, not good enough is it just to know it, but are we living by it? Is it, does it have weight in our lives? Are we coming to the river again with the large vessel so we can bring a lot away from it as our intimacy where it needs to be? Um, let's read it again. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask, think, or think according to the power at work within us. This isn't one of those verses in the Bible that applies to all believers all the time. Right? Just because you believe, this verse isn't for everybody. This verse applies to believers who spend intimate time with God because it's according to what's working in you that determines what's working for you. Right? So how can something be working in you if you're not investing the time? It's just like expecting for the stock market to work for you and you don't have an investment in. Right? You got to put something in to get this verse out. Right. So you can know it. But is it working in your life? Right. Um, if there is limited power and authority that's working on the inside, there will be limited power and authority operating on the outside. The reason you want to draw near, as the word says, draw near to me as I may draw near to you is so that you can have spiritual authority. Right. And that's one thing, again, many Christians lack. You don't get it just because you say yes to Jesus Christ. You get it because you spend intimate time with the Lord, right? Um, so now unto him who is able, the word says, God doesn't have a capacity problem. His ability is performance-based, and, and it's about doing and not just talking and understanding, right? Abundantly and above whatever you can ask or think. Think about that. That's where the Lord begins with those who have an intimate life in him. He, he, he begins with abundantly above all, right? You know, that's the norm for him when you have an intimate life with him. Now, that's when you know you're operating at a different spiritual level. When your intimacy has expanded and your capacity with God is doing stuff that you didn't even ask for or never even thought of. Think about that statement. Man, when, when you're so close to God... God is doing stuff you didn't even ask for. So above what you ask, you ask for, Lord, heal my body. But God don't only heal your body. He gives you a platform to go out and tell the world your testimony. Hallelujah. You say, Lord, give me a job. But God don't only give you a job. I have a friend that's been out of work for a year and a half, a good Christian brother. Right? And he's been, and the Lord has sustained him. You know, anytime the bank account gets so low, you're like, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my bills. And he's been applying. He's been, he's never been without a job his whole adult life. You know, he has a wife and a couple of kids and a household doing everything right. The brother lives on his knees. He prophesies, loves the Lord, loves people, serving the right way. But he was without employment for a year and a half, right? And any anytime he'd even try to reduce himself and try to go get any old job, the Lord would dry up those avenues. He couldn't even get a job that was beneath his skill level. All of a sudden, the Lord just blessed him with a job. He called me this week. He says, man, I can't even believe it. I was just asking for any old job. The Lord gave him a job in the field of his desire, right? His dream job he landed, and he's making in excess of 20000 more than what he even asked. And he asked for a lot. So, so the Lord gave him something abundantly above what he even asked or what he even th thought of, right? You, you know, so the Lord is working, but it, all, it was all be predicated on that brother's intimacy with the Lord. Because he had an intimate time with the Lord, he never fainted. He never gave up. He never threw in a towel. He never let his circumstances dictate how he was going to view the Lord. He, he never asked the Lord questions like, Lord, why are you doing this to me? He just said, Lord, I put my faith in you. Amen. And now the Lord has blessed him and he has a great testimony. That's what the Lord can do in your life. But it all begins with your intimacy, right? So our focus is intimacy with God. 
Don't focus on the power, because if you focus on the intimacy, naturally your capacity expands. If you have an expanded capacity in the Lord, right, if you know more, then you can go do more. But if you don't even know how this stuff works, you can't expect um, to, to heal the sick. You can't expect to raise the dead. You can't expect to speak a word of, in confidence of wisdom. You can't expect to make something out of nothing as the Lord will have you do unless you have a great capacity in him. But it all begins with your intimacy. Increased intimacy will lead to increased capacity. If you have capacity, then God will grant you the authority that you need. Amen. So in closing, again, I'll say it again, and I want you to write this down. Intimacy determines capacity. Capacity determines authority. Right? Intimacy, capacity, authority. Say that with me three times. Intimacy, capacity, authority. Intimacy, capacity, authority. Intimacy, capacity, authority. Amen. That's the flow, right? That's Paul's prayer, and that's God's best for you and your lives and all of us in our lives. So if you want to operate in spiritual authority, if you want, if you just have, that's where it talks about, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can make mountains move. Well, you got to have the capacity in order to do so, to walk in that type of authority. So it begins with your intimacy. So I want you to talk about, uh, think about it this week. Not think about it, but move into action. I want you to get closer to Jesus Christ so that you can exercise the authority that you were meant to have. Your purpose is wrapped up in that authority. But no authority with no capacity. No capacity without intimacy, right? Um, amen. So the challenge for this week, meditate on this passage of Scripture. I want you to read. Can we do it from Monday through Saturday, right? Monday through Saturday right? Six days. Um, I want us to read Ephesians chapter 3 verses 13 through 21. I want us to read it, get greater understanding on our own, meditate on it, and, and that should take you no more than three to five minutes to read it. But for the rest of the hour, let's spend an hour a day. Let's commit an hour a day. Let's give one hour back. We can, we can give one hour back to the creator. He gave us 24. Let's give him one. Read Ephesians 3, 13 through 21 each day this week, and then sit and spend intimate time with the Lord. If you've got requests, that's allowed. Let it be known. If you need something, ask for it. But rather, I'd rather you spend a majority of that hour listening to God. Even if you think you don't hear something, just know this. The Lord is always communicating with you. He wants to download to you the answers to your questions that you have. Lord, how come? Lord, why? Lord, when? He wants to answer those questions. So prayer isn't just you spouting off a bunch of requests and questions and asking God some. Wait for the answer. So ask him what you need to, but sit there and wait for your answers, but then also wait for your instructions. Because the Lord wants to communicate with many of you right now in this season. You have this, the, the very answer to problems that have been plaguing people for generations. Amen. What if you knew something that can unlock something on the inside of someone else that can change their whole life? Well, wait for it in prayer and allow the Lord to expand your capacity so you can operate in spiritual authority and say, hey, listen, I was praying uh, to the Lord the other day and you came up and this is what the Lord is saying. Amen. That's our assignment this week. Um, let's move forward. Um, you know, this is important. We do this every week. The reason why we preach the gospel and minister the gospel is so that hearts and minds can be changed. Um, first, for the unbeliever. So if there's anyone out there who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'll read to you this one scripture um, that deals with salvation. Romans 10 and 9 says, because if you confess with your mouth that, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. We want to give you that opportunity right now. Um, I pray that something that I said triggered something on the inside of you that says, yes, Lord, um, I want intimacy with you. I want to grow in you. I want to expand my capacity and I want to operate in spiritual authority. Um, the, the Holy Spirit does not reside in those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ. So if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, um, you know, or even if you have, it's okay to say this prayer again. I want to lead you in what we know as the prayer of salvation. So if you could bow your heads with me. Lord, G Lord God, I am a sinner. And I want you to repeat this. Lord God, I am a sinner. I ask you forgive my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only Son of God. 
that he was sent to the earth, that he died on the cross, and that God raised him from the dead. That is my confession. Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. So I thank God. If this is the first time you've prayed that prayer, welcome home. Welcome to the family. As the word says, you now are saved. You called upon the name of the Lord. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. Um, now you can participate in this challenge this week um, and know that God will move and begin to grant you spiritual authority. Um, so, and those of you who um, rededicated your life by saying that prayer, then more power be unto you. Listen, so many of us are walking around powerless is because we don't have intimacy. Now you have the answer. It's right there in the text. Many of us have read that scripture over and over and over again, speaking of Ephesians uh, 3 and 20, um, but it's a conditional scripture. You see, if you don't have the capacity to receive the fullness of God, then all that's working in you could be very little. Right. But if you allow, if you spend intimate time with God, just like that popcorn, popcorn kernel that's been intimate time in the microwave. Right. Then you begin to heat up. And as you pop, 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 that means that there's so much on the inside of you that is now being recognized on the outside. So the old man is put to rest and nobody recognizes him anymore. And the new man has come to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, let's move forward in the taking of our communion. I hope you have your elements ready. Right. Um, 1 Corinthians 11 and 23 is where we're going to be coming from. Um, and I'll read, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was portrayed, he took the bread. And as he took the bread, he gave thanks and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Mine is already broken for me. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. In the same manner, he also took the cup after cup, supper, saying, This is the cup in the new covenant of my blood. This, as you, often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of the bread and you drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take the cup and drink. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Moving forward. Um, again, we want to sincerely um, and genuinely thank everybody who has continued to give in this season. And I know it's been trying times. Um, there's people that have been tithing and giving off of their, even their unemployment. So their job stopped. Um, they've been blessed with money. There's people who tithed and given off of their stimulus checks. We thank you for that. Um, income tax checks that rolled in earlier this year. We ask that you continually uh, continue to give and give um, not based on any number or percentage or anything like that. Um, give whatever the Lord um, impresses upon your heart. So instructions to give are on the screen. Um, you can give online through our PayPal account or Givelify account. Just go to our website um, and hit the Give tab and you can give um, even via an app called Givelify on your phone. You can download it. Just um, search for Christ Church in the Valley Palmdale. Um, and you can give online or many of you um, still like to give um, um, through, via a check. So the um, instructions on where to mail your checks to CCV Palmdale um, are there on the screen. We're located in the city of Palmdale. Um, we thank you for your generous gifts. Again, you're not just giving to the church, although if you're part of our local church, the expectation is we're all in this together. Um, so let's give together so that we can maintain our property. Um, we can continue to do the work that needs to be done on the property. Um, if you're not a part of our ministry, we thank you for your gift. You can be given anywhere or sowing anywhere. We thank you that God has impressed upon your heart um, to, to sow seed into a good ministry. Um, but you're not just giving to a local church. Um, you, you're giving into the kingdom of God. And as my grandma used to say in the old church, you can't be God given. So even if you think you don't have it, if the Lord asks you to give, then be obedient um, through because of your intimate relationship with him and watch how he begins to bless you. Amen. Um, as a reminder, as always, join us on this same YouTube channel on Tuesday night at seven o'clock um, as we dive deeper into um, our Bible study. Um, seven o'clock on Tuesday via Facebook Live. Um, and then we're also, I believe we have maybe three more weeks left in our CCB Kids Summer Session. It's been absolutely amazing. My brother Alfredo, who opened up service, um, he did the lesson last week. 
um, you know, on fitness. It's been absolutely amazing. Again, um, we're going over the blueprint um, for our kids. So, so many kids are learning so many different things um, as well as adults. So, again, faith, family, finance, fitness, and we're on the fitness um, and then in the last two weeks, we'll deal with focus, uh, focusing on purpose, focusing on um, the reason why God has us here on earth. And so many adults, we struggle with that as well. So it'd be awesome to have your kids tune in. Every Monday, a new lesson is uploaded on our Facebook page um, for your kids' enjoyment. Um, but again, um, just ha it's another tool. Have them tune in and you can learn something from it as well. Um, as we do every Sunday, I just want to sincerely thank you. You could have been worshiping anywhere else, literally in the world right now. There's podcasts, um, there's YouTubes, there's Facebook. Um, we thank God that he sent you here. Uh, we pray that the word today was not an offense to anyone, but that it builds you up. Um, I pray that you can take a hold of this word and begin to operate in it immediately. And for those of you who have your dump truck, right, who have your huge tanker to receive all that the river has to offer, um, I encourage you to read over the scripture again today. Why well, wait till tomorrow? The assignment calls for you to do it tomorrow. Um, but for those of you who want to begin to build a more intimate and in-depth relationship with the Lord, start today. So read Ephesians 3, 13 through 21. Meditate on it um, and pray to the Lord. Again, let your requests be known, but leave time, right, so that the Lord can answer your questions and so that he can give you instruction. And with that said, God bless you. Have a blessed week. We hope that you tune in on Tuesday to Bible study, um, and we'll see you then. God bless.